Welcome to the Christian Indie Writers Podcast, where we inform, encourage, and support Christian indie writers on their journey to publication. I'm Jamie Hirschberger. I write short fiction under the pen name J.R. Nichols. I'm Jennifer Carl Cohn, and I write historical Christian romance. I'm Christina Katane, and I write Christian dystopian fiction. I'm Rhonda Hagerman, and I write fiction and nonfiction. Good morning, everybody. We've got some early birds. Gigi saying good morning or afternoon. Piper's here with us. Hello, Piper. Good morning, Shell. And howdy, howdy from Teresa. Hello from all of us at the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. We really appreciate you tuning in today. Pop over in the chat and say hello or like and subscribe or whatever. Show us your love and support. Tell your friends about the podcast. If you like and subscribe, you'll never miss an episode. So there is that. Um, oh, good afternoon from Maria. And um, we're going to go around the table and say good morning to all our hosts. This is a section we call What's Up? What's up with you, Jen? What's up? <laughs> well, besides the fact that I killed the plant. I see. It is very dead. I have no like just so you guys all understand, everything outside my office is chaos right now, and we are going to be remo- finishing, like finishing it, which means everything has to move somewhere. I don't know what's going to happen, so I can't put this out there. Only like so, you guys get to look. It's not completely dead. I'm trying to revive it, but over Christmas, I forgot about it. So one plant I did not water, and it died. But my what's up is that somehow I hurt my back this weekend. I'm not really sure how. I just did. And it was like debilitating. It was so bad. And um, I'm getting a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I ended up having to go for massage and chiropractor this week. And it's crazy how your back pain affects your whole body. And now after- tell us where the problem was. So wait, so where was the ba- the back pain was your lower back, right? Back. Yeah. And, and I went for massage. And as she was working on me, it was, she spent almost 100% of the time on my shoulders and my neck, which we all know I have headaches. And she's like, like you are a mess basically is what she said. And I went for, she did work on my lower back too, but then I went for the adjustment. It's in the same office and I hadn't been in years. And so this is a new uh, office for me and that my friend Carrie had suggested. And I went in and so they adjusted me. And at the very end, she like tugged my legs. And when she tugged my left leg, I guess my ankle popped. And she's like, well, that's probably your problem. So she thinks that the whole problem started with my ankle. Wow. Like it's crazy how God has made our bodies and how everything is connected and works together. So just weird. I cool. just have to say that if there's ever any doubt that you're from the Midwest, just ask oh, no. someone for you to pronounce L E G S. Legs. legs. My legs. legs. My oh, legs. Oh, no. Oh, no. Don't you know? Sure, I think Bethlehem is a better uh, test because Bethlehem? the Midwesterners turned it into Bethlehem. Oh, I'm gonna bring some bread and cheese. You can have a sandwich. <laughs> well, maybe they're saying bread with ham instead of Bethlehem. Yeah, you could be wrong. Right. Yeah. They do like no. to eat in the Midwest. Because I was in radio and I was in radio in Boston, like they basically, not physically, but like beat it out of me, my accent. I didn't know that I had an accent. And then I came back here and worked in radio. It's still, still because I was in radio, I didn't have the accent. And then I stopped radio. It didn't take long. Does not take long before the homegrown accent is at full effect. Well, I like it. Legs should be spelled A L A Y G S. <laughs> Legs. Just kidding. Sometimes right. my Alaskan accent pops out. Well, what's up with you and your Alaskan accent? Tina, tell us what's up this week. Uh, well, I'm working hard on my business plan. Good girl. Um, I'm back to working on my paying job. So I'm trying to get a schedule down that works for all that. Mm. Um, my son is off in cars with other teenagers right now. So I'm a little. <laughs> Deep breaths, mom. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be 18 in six months. I need to get over it. So I don't know. There's really. Um, oh, my greatest, my biggest news, my audio book is finally for sale. Yay! Yay! After like two and a half months. That's really exciting. So Where can people on find Amazon, it? Amazon, iTunes, and audible.com. Awesome. And you had um, a native narrate that, didn't you? Do you want to talk yeah, about that? Yeah, her name more? is Kimberly Maceda, and she is an Alaskan native. And so she reads the book with an Alaskan native accent. Hmm. Which at first I thought was going to be annoying, but once you get into chapter one, like you forget, like it kind of fades in the background, even for me. And there were parts of the story when I listened to her reading it 
that came alive even for me. And I had to pull out my book and make sure that's what I had actually written because it sounded so good. I'm like, no, that's not what I wrote. <laughs> but it was. So like something about her reading it in that accent just made the whole thing come to life for me. Awesome. So I'm really happy with it. That's great. Well, uh, congratulations on that. That is some really big news. I'm going to get kind of caught up in the chat here. Piper was talking about a Boston accent, Jen. You didn't pick up a Boston accent while you were there, huh? No, because um, when I was there, um, I was in college. And so the college I went to were so many international people. Sure, so, like, sure, sure. So accents around you. But when I worked it professionally, uh, I picked up a few things. I used to say peace or pizza. <laughs> um, those of you that are from there, I never got the pack, the ca, but like things like pizza, pizza, and uh, what's the other one that I came home with, and people are like, "What did you just say?" And I didn't realize I was saying it funny. So, but it does have wonderful accent. Yeah, um, yeah. So there's replicate. I don't know. I well, I we think we can replicate it. I'm sure if you're from Boston, you're like, no. Nah, uh-uh. It's very similar to a New York accent. And my dad grew up in Brooklyn, and my uncle and my aunt used to have a foster daughter. Who I thought her name was Mada, like M A U D A. <laughs> and like ten years later, I found later I found out her name was Marta. <laughs> like I had no clue. That's funny. That's so funny. Maria, Maria, says, go ahead. I'm sorry. The test for most American accents it seems to pronounce in places like UK as Buckingham, Nottingham, etc. Whereas we say Buckingham and Nottingham. Interesting. Uh, no, I would say the one word that's a real test is. Edinburgh. Does she even know what that is? Edinburgh. Yeah. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Yeah. Edinburgh. Or Edinburgh. Ooh. So, oh. American versus Scottish. I guess so. I get all in my head about pronunciation when people ask me, how do I say it? Which this can be my what's up, as a matter of fact, since I have nothing else to say. Like somebody will say, how do you say the word P-E-C-A-N? And then because I'm thinking about how do I say it, I say it different way. Like I, I have to be caught saying it for people to know how I really like my friends say pillow, like pillow, like it should be spelled P-E-L-L-O-W. And I don't do that. But like when they ask me, how do you say it? Then I get all in my head. I can't, I can't say it right all of a sudden because someone's paying attention. What's up with you, Rhonda? Uh, <laughs> I know, right? I was just thinking uh, I never say Pello. No, I know Hello. they're from uh, Jersey. Their dad is from Jersey and uh, they picked it up from him. Yeah. Yep. Uh, let's see what's up with me. Lots of seashelling this week. I've found a lot of shells that I've um, never had before. I'm really Ooh. excited. So that's my fun time. But uh, writing wise, I have been working on my business plan. It's that time of year for me. And um, that's pretty much been my week. Well, I'm you really glad. such a rough life. I know. I know. <laughs> Someone's got to do it, though. Yeah. Well, I also thought of you because I saw one of those, you know how they do the 10-minute crafts videos or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they took a seashell and they pressed it into sand and then they poured melted wax and it made a candle like the shape oh. of the seashell. Oh, I thought cute. that was a really good idea. Maybe I'll send you a link so you can look at that. I can see Rhonda now on the beach, like pushing <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> like a thing of wax and a campfire. Uh, right. <laughs> Just another excuse to spend more time on the beach, right? Yes, right. absolutely. Exactly. Well, and Rhonda mentioned a business plan, which is a perfect segue into our topic, actually, because Rhonda said to us, I think we should do an episode about a business plan. And the three of us immediately threw up and said, <laughs> no way. Not true. Not true. But uh, we did not know that apparently every year Rhonda does a business plan. Is this true, Rhonda? Yes. Talk a little bit about your experience with the business plan, if you would. Okay, so about 10 years ago, um, I decided I want to get serious about whatever online thing I was doing. Uh, this is when I started my writing career, really. And so as a stay-at-home mom, I didn't feel like I could spend a lot of money on programs and tutorials and all those things that everybody's coming out with. So I decided to be official and write a business plan and present it to my husband. So that he would know that I was serious about it and I knew why I wanted the money, exactly what I was going to go for and all that. Yes, so because you, like you said, your husband was earning income and you were not, correct? Right. And right. you wanted to balance being respectful of the fact that he's working hard for the money right. with the fact that your, your intention was to make money, not to lose money, right? Right. Yep. So you yep. wanted to sit down and actually crunch numbers and prove that it would work. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. 
Um, and so I felt so good about doing that the first year that just I've done one every year. I don't necessarily present it to them every year, but um, that is why I did it in the first place. Awesome. So we talked about um, why you would want to do a business plan a little bit. But I think when we were planning for this episode, some really good reasons kind of were born out of that discussion. Do any of you want to take a swing at any of that stuff that we talked about? Like the business plan seems like a chore, but why is it more like a tool? Do you guys care to speak about that? Well, I, for one, it helps you have clarity in your minds. Like if you know where you're going, then you can make decisions about which turns to take and which turns not to take along your journey. I see. So you can say, does this action I'm about to take measure up with my business plan? Right. Or is it going to take me off on a, on a side trip that I don't need to be on? Yes. And so I think it's really wise to start a business plan at the beginning of the year or at like coming off of a vacation when you're sort of not in the middle of everything, because then you can have a right focus and a right priority. Correct. Because then you're not thinking so much about a problem that is happening right now. You could take a long vision of your business. Would you guys agree with that? Mm -hmm. Right. Like this I is would my Oh, go Sorry. ahead. No, go ahead. I would even say that I should have done it immediately after I published mm. um, my first my first book, so that I would have a clear vision of where I was going going forward for mm -hmm. book two. Mm -hmm. So this is my first time ever doing a business plan, but every year I would do um, kind of like a a calendar, like a like I would map out the year of what I needed to get done in each month. Um, that in order to like reach my goals, but this is like more in depth and in a very, very good way. Um, so it's been a good experience for me. I'm not completely finished with it, but I have kind of a rough draft done. But Piper says business plan equals plotting, writing your story. Very yeah. good. Yep. Yeah, it's that's kind good. of the equivalent of that, but in the business sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Piper, that's very good. If I were you, I would coin that and put it up as banner all over the place. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, very good. Okay, so... We have talked about like why you would want to have a business plan. Um, we went to the Small Business Administration because Rhonda had gotten a lot of tips and tricks from there just to kind of know what a business plan would include, whatever. But this was after Rhonda coming to us and saying, here's kind of how we would do it. So Rhonda, you started off by talking to us about the very first element that is necessary in a business plan, which is what? Well, first, let me start by saying there are two different kinds of business plans. Oh, yes. Correct. Um, and that's an important distinction because the one we're talking about today is it's a lean startup plan. Um, because when people think of a business plan, a lot of times it's the 50 page book that they want to take to a bank or some sort of a financer to get money and prove to them why uh, they need the money and how they're going to use it and all that. Well, Today, we're only talking about a lean plan. And it can be, you can do one paragraph for all these headings. It can be just a one sheet. The whole purpose of it is to clarify in your mind what you're doing with your year. Yes, okay. that makes sense. Because like Maria is saying, she would love to have a strategy as to how to actually translate interest in sales to build a business that actually generates income. Yes, okay, that's exactly right, Maria. Now you know that that's, what you have to figure out and what your business plan is going to be focusing on where someone like me, I'm just mm -hmm. launching. So my goals for the year are to get my products to market, you see, and this is why the business plan is good is because it helps you focus your efforts so that you're moving forward instead of staying in place or unfortunately going backward. Or ending okay. up on a side trail. Yes. And again, we don't, we're not talking the 50 pages, super duper in depth, every little step you're going to take, because we're not looking for financing from an outside person, mm -hmm. but you are doing this all for your own benefit. So what's next, Rhonda? Okay. okay. So, so there will be a cover page for your um, uh, business plan. And that is the executive summary. Um, so what you're going to do in that, you're going to talk about the concept for your business whether you're going to be writing all fiction novels, whether you're going to be writing a combination of novels and articles and just whatever you plan on 
doing to earn money through the, that is your business concept. And then you talk about what your current situation is right now. And then you talk about what you plan on including this year to bring success, more success or to bring success to the things that you're already doing again, because every year you want growth, but it doesn't have to be some huge turnover in your business. That's different. Right. I mean, you might even, you might even be running in the negative for the first year or two, you right. might do your financials and find out that it's going to be a couple of years before you turn a profit, but at least you will know, at least you will know that this is a long-term situation. Mm -hmm. And honey, I know I asked you for another 500 bucks, but remember we're playing a long game, right? Yeah. And, and yep. what success is for each of us is really personal because Correct. success right. is, this is what I want to achieve at the end of the year, which might not be, mm -hmm. Uh, making a profit, it might be getting your book out there, or it might be um, not giving up, you know, right. so. Yep. Right. So right now I might say, well, success for me at the end of the year is going to be, I don't know, is it going to be selling a thousand books? Is it, well, this is right now where I determine and make my goal for what my success will be at the end of the year. Very good. So you're making a clear target. Yep. Because you can't hit a target you can't see. I learned that before. Don't yep. know who said it, but it makes sense. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, I took a stab at an executive summary for Christian Indie Writers Podcast. I don't know if there's a way for people to look at it, Jen. Yep. Um, yep. yep. I'm getting ready to do that right now. Awesome. Wow. What are you going to do? Are you going to share? Like, are you share screening? <laughs> oh, look. Ah! Ooh, it's fancy. Look at the top. Oh, I love that. Oh, oh, before you get started. Okay, so to really narrow it down, it's like your elevator pitch for your book. This is your elevator pitch for your business. Well, it's way too long for that. I didn't know it was supposed to. Like, is it too long, Rhonda, would you say? Mm, if that's the entire thing, I would say no. All right. So it says the mission of the Christian Indie Writers Podcast is to inform, encourage, and equip Christian indie writers along their journey toward publication. We are a podcast sustained virtually by four women operating from different locations in the United States. That was because they told me the location was important. Our, pro our podcast offers writing support and advice from Christian worldview, focusing specifically on maintaining a clean format, meaning generally safe for viewing, listening at work or with children present, content rated PG or milder. We will be successful as Christ is our foundation, so we already win. However, we believe we will be successful financially because of this unique reliance upon Jesus Christ to unify us, resulting in a unique product, the most authentic community of writers to be found online. As our focus is to lift others as we climb, we believe the Lord will continue to use us to encourage and support his work wherever the show is broadcasted. So that's what I said would be our executive summary. And then I said, I would do type whatever and then let you guys talk about what's working, what's not, what we should tweak. Go. A couple of things for me, like, first of all, love it. I think Jamie, you are very gifted in writing this kind of stuff too. But, um, mm -hmm. The one thing that we didn't talk about is we normally say support in the podcast and you put equip Ooh. now. So is this something that we're changing? And it could be because <laughs> we, the, our tagline was from day one, but have we found that as we have progressed, that it has changed what we do for our listeners. And I'm not certain that we need to make that decision right now, but this is why this is so good to do a business plan because it makes you start to question are we on target? Are we doing what we want to do? Does something need to change? Right. And I feel like you putting equip maybe is something we need to discuss about. Maybe I we think so. Cause it was totally not on purpose. I really thought that was the word. Okay. And as I think about us, like we're not great with like social media, which is, I think when people are talking support, they're really expecting someone to be there and hold your hand like every day. And that's just not us. So mm. anyway, maybe this is a discussion that we have to have off camera. I mean, a lot of this will be because it was just me and there's four of us. So I really appreciate you focusing on that one thing because it was completely, I don't know if you would call it Freudian or what I thought that was the word. Isn't that funny? <laughs> like I just typed it from memory. Right. So but I think it's good for us to have like, that shows us why this is good for us to do. Yes, mm -hmm. for sure. Absolutely. Now this yes. thing that you have in quotes where it says the most authentic community of writers to be found online, was that something that was said in like a review or something? No, I totally made it up. I just, put, <laughs> I put it in there because I liked it and oh, okay. we can change it if we want. I just 
was inspired. So whatever. Again, okay. uh, it could be an off the air conversation. We could revisit later. The other uh, thing the, I question. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. The other thing that I would question too is that um, successful financially, we've always said that we aren't going to make money on, like we don't ever expect to make money on this podcast. We want to keep feeding the money that whatever would come in, like through other venues and stuff will be fed back in and that we will succeed in our personal writing careers because the podcast becomes successful and because the group of writers around us become successful as one person is lifted up, our whole community is lifted up. Right. And so I might, so again, it's something for us to discuss. So I'm glad that you, that actually is in there, but um, I just want to clarify that, 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 that was probably just something you typed, right? Yes. Okay. And, and yes. So here's the deal too, because when I wrote this also, what I pretended was that the four of us were going to go to a bank or to oh. someone who had a bunch of money and was thinking about giving it to us to keep our yes, podcast please. going or whatever. And they were expecting a return on their investment just in my imaginary brain. So in my imaginary brain, I had to make us financially <laughs> successful because I had to convince this person to invest in us. You understand? And yeah. so we, um, when I make the financial part, it will be important for us to understand what our real goal is before I start it so that I can set us up to meet the goal that we want to meet. Do you know what I'm saying? With a plan that will get us where we want to go. Rhonda, your hand was up. What's up? Yes. Okay. I am not disagreeing. I'm just adding more information. Great. Okay. Um, the one thing that it's missing, it's great. The only thing it's missing is that it does need to have some sort of a financial statement in it. Whether ah. um, this business will take us zero dollars to run or... Uh, the ladies will continue to divide all the expenses by four or whatever, but there are expenses that do have to be paid. So this can continue. So we do have to earn some money, even though it's being reinvested. Right. Oh, okay. So, we need to state that exactly. Yeah. What, yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So we yeah. would have to state that currently we are all the four, the expenses are divided by four and we are all investing, but that we are want or moving toward that whatever profit is made. 100% reinvestment. Or mm -hmm. Yeah. Good point. Awesome. Really okay, good point. Great. All right. So that would be the executive summary. And what's the next part of a business plan? Um, I should be looking at my outline and I could tell y'all, what is it? Someone else. Well, depending on how long it is, it could be a contents page, but uh, we, you know, we're just going to try to do a one page one, right? So then your business statement. Business statement. I products and services is next. Well, um, that goes under business statement. Okay. Um, well then we don't have a business statement. So moving on to products and services. Well, tell us what a business statement is. So yeah. when, we, when we finalize this, we'll know. Cause yeah. Oops. <laughs> Your business statement is in your executive summary, you mentioned what we do. So this is where you go into detail. So any, if you have a question is like, well, am I going to do podcasts every week? Or are we going to change that? Or are we going to um, do four more sprint books this year or what? You need to decide the products and services that you will be doing in the year. Because if something comes along and says, well, let's start a second podcast. Well, that wasn't part of our part business of plan for the year. But so I thought that we handled all of that later when we got to the other operations and stuff like that. So isn't it repeating? Well, this is your business summary. This is why the ones for the bank can be so many pages long. Yeah, forget this noise. I don't need to tell myself the same thing 300 times. What do you mean business summary? I just wrote a whole executive summary. How is it different? Explain to me why I would need both. Well, I just was. Okay. No, it's fine. I just don't understand why you need both. So you have the executive summary. How is the yep. business summary different? Well, because the business summary is going to list out exactly what you are going to be doing for the year. How is that different so, than operations, which we cover later? Well, the products and services, that's not under operations. But operations is a whole segment that we have in part two of this business plan. Well, this could be where maybe Joanna Penn veers from the Small Business Administration, possibly. Okay. What Ryan is talking about is with Joanna Penn is that she has recently come out with a book 
that both Tina and I um, have been reading too when we started talking about doing a business plan. And, and it was it's kind of good because I think what Rhonda is doing for us is much more concise and it's it's easy. You don't have to purchase anything. You can go to the Small Business Administration to their website and you can find all this information. But it's kind of nice to have the Joanna Penn book, which I'm going to try to bring up on my Kindle right now, um, so that you can go through. She asks lots of great questions. Um, it is called the author. Can you see that on my Kindle? Your author yep. business plan. So it might be a little bit different, but um, do you guys want to, shall we look at the graphic that we have next yeah. of what Jamie has written? And then maybe we'll, maybe we just have things labeled wrong. That's yeah, but here, yes, but okay. here's the deal too, because I know I'm sounding strident or I'm just like, I'm just super duper seeking understanding. And I have found that much like you know, legal documents that are 8 million pages when I don't understand why they need to be 8 million pages. I'm trying to cover my fanny. And if there's some reason why I need to have this, then I want to know why it's different because I just, I just don't want to do the same work 300 times. So I'm just trying to figure out why it's different. So I don't mean to be so strident with my asking. I'm just trying to make sure that I have an understanding. So each I don't want to be so. Each one is just a greater level of detail. Got it. It's All more right. and more precise. Got it. I wanted, I just want to add something before we move on to the next section, because in Joanna Penn's book, she, she's written her business plan specifically for authors, as opposed to the um, small business bureau being just generic. And she has you thinking about your author brand and your comparison authors and your reader avatar. And I just want to say that those questions that she asked in that section really, really helped me. Um, because yeah. like when she, when you talk about a brand, like you think about the Pepsi logo or the Coca-Cola logo or whatever, Nike, the Nike swoosh, but a brand is so much deeper than that. And when she said that a, your brand is a promise that you make to your readers that you are not going to break. And so I really had to think about what am I promising my readers that is going to be um, offered in every book that I write? And I had to sit down and think about that. And that was so super helpful to me to clarify in my mind, this is this is who I am as an author and this is what I'm offering my readers. Can Very you give nice. an example? Oh, I could find it real quick. <laughs> While she's finding that, I would like to comment too that like, yes, I, and I also bought the coordinating workbook. I got the ebook and I got the workbook. After I got the workbook, I started reading the, the ebook and realized that she has all these pages on her website. So you don't need to buy this. Also, all the questions that are in here are in each chapter. So you could just put it in a journal. But again, I agree that the questions are really good. However, having done this and then having looked at what the Small Business Administration does and what Rhonda is bringing to us, I feel like I prefer what Rhonda is doing. I like that I know this stuff, but I'm going to write mine more concise the way that Rhonda has it set up too. So mm -hmm. I'm just putting that out there for everybody. So that's why we're sharing this is there's different mm -hmm. ways of doing business plans. You just right. got to figure out what works for you. Yes. And that mm -hmm. is why also you're noticing confusion with me and like, what? Because yeah, there's so many different ways and we're trying to scare crow together our way. And, and Jamie has not read this. Nope. And so what she has I'm done not. is just based on what we've discussed as a group. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. So what's, Okay, so what I wrote down was, I will write books with an overarching biblical theme as its third rail. Characters with true-to-life spiritual struggles who overcome them through internalizing knowledge of the truth. Uh, beautiful natural mm -hmm. settings and page-turning adventures. I so love though that. I, I left out Alaska because I have ideas for books that, don't, that aren't set in Alaska. So I don't want to make that promise to my readers mm -hmm. that all my books will be set in Alaska. That I was love very it. concise. Yes. And I love that. And <clears throat> as similar, I'm going to write something very similar about my books and I'm going to leave out historical because I'm moving in a direction that I want to be able to write contemporary or historical. So that's a great example. Thanks, Tina. Really mm -hmm. good job, Tina. Good work there. Everybody yeah. in the chat is also saying great job. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And um, we the chat is very active. Sorry that we're not saying to like, please go through and read. Um, once again, our people in chat have a lot of information, a lot of questions about business plans that are being answered by one another. Thank you guys for being so supportive over there. But um, we are going to show the next graphic just because I thought we were moving on to products and services. Womp womp. So we don't have the business statement, but we can uh, cobble one together, I'm sure. Yeah. 
But it's possible. Is this the business statement? Each product or service we offer is further detailed below. Mm -hmm. Our primary product is the podcast. Mm -hmm. We also offer a written book and more our plan. In addition, the Christian New Writers podcast will eventually offer several products for sale, such as coffee mugs, planners, pens, bookmarks, and other trinket type items commonly referred to as merch. Is that cover what you would say, Rhonda, would be the business summary or no? Yes. Um, yes. So your business plan, it can be as personal as your personality. So for Jamie, a one page, one paragraph per um, heading is perfect. For Jennifer, she, every sentence is very specific. Um, this this specific, you know, it just, your personality determines what your business plan is going to look like is what like I'm trying we, to say. Yeah, we, we talked off air during our meeting that mine might even be bulleted because that's just yeah. how I think with the kind of stuff, you know. Mine will look yeah. like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Love it. It's a mind map. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. yeah. So um, for a business plan for Jamie and her personality, yes, this covers, um, really, it covers the vision, the market analysis, competitive analysis, strategy, and the products and services. Ah, I see. Yep. So it just, we had a, a syn what is the word? When the word means the same, the different thing. Syntax is not right. Anyway, we had a word uh, confusion there. We're calling something th different things. Mm -hmm. Great. So we've got a podcast, books, and merch eventually. And I'm pretty specific what time we do the podcast. And I didn't know, did I have to say the segments and all that crap? I figured that would be in procedures like later. So I just did what I did here. What would you add, Rhonda? Do you want to read it, Jamie? I can't read it because it's so tiny. Okay. Um, hey, if if you hover over the screen, you get a little box that you can make the thing full screen. But I'll go ahead and read it because I've already done that. Um, podcast each Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. The Christian Indie Writers Podcast will air on YouTube as well as Facebook as a live stream presentation simultaneous with a live chat in the viewing audience. With the viewing audience, each episode will be as close to one hour as possible, allowing for ad lib comments from the host and for someone's sprint story to run long. I'll read the book. So it's not okay. just you ready read. Perfect. The podcast hosts have collaborated already on the book, 30 Days of Writing Sprint Prompts. All profits from book sales are used to sustain the podcast. At the time sales from the book out earn the cost of show production, another amendment to the business plan will be performed to account for spending any additional earnings. The podcast hosts are currently in discussion about plans for future books. And then Merch just says, final decisions about Merch are still in negotiations as of the time this plan was created because we still have not decided about our Merchy Merch. Mm -hmm. So, Ron, right. is that okay to put there? Well, those are okay to put there for today. But for your business plan to be complete, those two questions need to be answered. Or you don't sell Merch this year. Right. You put it off so to We need year. to have more of a plan about what we're going to do for Mar Merch so that we mm -hmm. can, like make sure we stick to the plan, right? The yeah. other thing I was wondering about was writing retreats. Like we've always said we want to do writing retreats. So that would be something mm -hmm. we would decide now if we were going to try to do one for this year, if yep. the detail, not the, all the details, but like the plan and how we're going to would be mentioned here, right? Mm -hmm. So interesting. Piper says, um, so just a suggestion. I love big coffee mugs. <laughs> <laughs> Big coffee must cost a lot more. So if you guys are willing to pay a lot more, we're willing to do it. We're trying to figure that out. So, oh, would this be where we talk about paid advertising too or no? That's that's later. No, because this is things that we are selling to make money. Like right, this is how different. we are making money. Okay. Great. And then, so we have another segment after this. And because I'm full screen, I'm not looking at my outline. So we moved on to marketing after products and services. Now, Rhonda, do you want to talk about this next section a little bit? As far as what normally, like, you know, so is she frozen? I think she is. I thought oh, she was just really frozen. interested in every word I was saying. She was hanging on my every oh, word for so long. She was having problems with her internet going out earlier. So all right, let's Hopefully go ahead and get her back. Let's go ahead and share screen of what we came up with for marketing, and hopefully we'll get her back here to um, to comment on this. Tina, you want to read a little so your voice is up a little? Sure. 
everyone was here. Um, as audience growth has not been a focus for any of the podcast hosts, marketing is not currently a focus of our business. We currently have no plans to market beyond the following. The website. The website, www.christianindiewriters.net, will be the home of the podcast. The website will be where potential viewers, listeners can find out about the show, as well as contact the hosts. You want me to read now? If you want to. Email list. A list of subscribers who have previously claimed freebies from the podcast is on hand for purposes of future marketing. Social media. Each of the hosts are responsible for an arm of social media. At the moment, there are no plans to expand or grow our social media presence, though each has committed to maintain or sustain her prescribed account on a sporadic basis. Paid advertising. No plans to participate in paid advertising right now. And again, all that could change if we had a meeting about it. I just had to work with whatever information right. I had when we were doing this. So did I, we don't know if we hit the nail or not because Rhonda isn't here to evaluate if all the information is there. So if I'm going to channel my best Rhonda yeah. or even best Joanna Penn, I was going to, I would say that this is not sufficient for us, that we nope. need to make these decisions, right? Yeah. That's the point. But I'm so glad you wrote it this way because now we have to start thinking about it. Like we, so we have no plans for paid advertising. Should we? No, nope, we are Probably not. should. Right. Yeah. Now, social media, I agree. I, social media is not work for us the way that like to bring really to bring in the way that needs to, but we have to have it. It brings in enough of a flow, right? Mm -hmm. Other than like really word of mouth and YouTube, people finding us on YouTube. Um, and then so there's all these things we need to talk about like individually. Well, yeah, start with this. Yes. So. And here's the thing, though, it's because for the four of us, here is where we would all have to make a commitment to do more work, because currently our work is writing. And then we do this podcast as sort of like, you know, a planning meeting and the podcast and to devote more time to grow this podcast is going to have to overflow into our personal business plans so that we make sure we are considering this podcast as a part of our personal success story yeah. and that we are using our time wisely to also invest in this podcast because it is a part of our marketing strategy for our personal books, um, if that makes any sense, which is probably not interesting to our audience so much because most of you are an individual, but that's for us to talk about um, off camera probably. Yeah, I was right. going to suggest that since I'm taking um, the SBF course ads for authors uh, maybe I could use our book for practice please like that would be you amazing. know I would have to be able to get into that KDP account um, to make ads but like I have about 15 ads running since November and my spend has only been four dollars so far well, so you any back on that do you know what's well I've sold one book according to like it, they would have to buy the book the moment they clicked on the ad mm -hmm. for it to be credited towards my, towards that, you know, in the KDP thing saying, this is what you made. Right. But I have seen an uptick in the sales of my books. So I think that maybe people are going back. Mm -hmm. Like I sold six books this week and that might not sound like a lot, but for me, that's a lot. Sure. With only um, one book out, I think that's great. Yeah. And so, I'm seeing an uptick based on um, some of the keywords that I'm using to try to see what, you know, where I'm getting the most impressions, where I'm getting the most clicks. Um, and so I, it would be interesting just to play around with our book and see what I can get done. Just, you know, like I'm not, I, but I would be willing to spend my own money if that's not something that, you know, is in the budget, but that's been a discussion for off camera. Right. Um, Teresa says, I found you on Google Podcasts and listened to you later for the first few months before connecting in YouTube and watching live. See, that's another thing we have to consider is maybe we need to be focusing our advertising app, um, like efforts on podcasts, not actually on YouTube. So again, I off camera, also I another conversation to have is like Patreon. Maybe we should revisit Patreon. Not saying to do it the way we did before, but um, we you know, we are paying for this podcast out of our pocket. We may have some listeners to be willing to just kick in a, a few bucks to help us along the way to grow the podcast for others. So. Yeah. Like Jen said, this was very much an eye opener as far as some work that we need to do. And what's really interesting too, is if the four of us put our minds to it, it should be no problem to market and advertise what we're doing because we're really not doing it to line our own pockets. We're doing it 
to um, help more people have community. So it should feel good to spread the word about the podcast. So let's uh, have a cheerleading session off camera about that soon. Okay, yeah. and then we have one more final section to talk about today before we can get to the feeding of the backs. Um, and this is a sales procedure. Now, for some people, you know, if you were going to the bank, they would want to know how are you going to get this product to people. But like for me, it was like, duh. So I just wrote, the purchase cycle for our book is rather straightforward. A customer learns of our book's existence, finds a link to it, um, clicks, submits payment. I mean, it just really seemed to me, I, d I did not understand why I would have to write this down for us. But I mean, oh, well, it's required. And other people would want to know. That's why I was hoping, like, can you guys understand? Is there something in here we might not have paid attention to if I wouldn't have taken the time to write it down? Maybe it opens your eyes to the fact that you need to think about pricing. It probably opens your eyes to the fact that you need to think about channels, where you're going to distribute. Are you going to do like find away voices or ACX if you do audiobooks, for example? Right. Um, actually, how are people going to find and purchase your content? So as I'm talking to you guys, I'm, I'm kind of getting a better understanding myself that those are all choices you're going to have to eventually make. And I think a lot of people don't take a moment to think beyond the actual writing and hitting the end. Jen, what are you going to say? Um, I just kind of flipped open the book, just kind of see like where, how she does it. And hers is down a little bit different. Like she has, um, she talks about products and services like we did. And then in the same area, it's writing process and production schedule. We've not touched on that. Like our, if we're going to have other books coming out this year, what does that schedule look like and how are we going to get to that point? Right. And um, mm -hmm. publishing and licensing strategy. We're not doing any licensing right now, but like, what is our publishing strategy? Are we wide? No, we've decided to go just exclusive with Amazon just because that's simple for us right now. Um, and then pricing strategy that would all kind of come into underneath this sales procedure. So all for these Joanna's things, way of doing it. Yes. We're for as authors. So we probably under our sales procedure, we probably do need to think about our pricing strategy with the book. Like when the next book comes out, do we make this one free? Like, you know, all those kind of things. And we need to lay that out in here too. So, mm -hmm. and here's yeah. the deal. This is all very good to do It's just really hard to do. If you're, you know, uh, um, when you're, when you're the one who knows the answers, you should have no problem finding all of those. Right. Okay. I think and it's really interesting. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, it's okay. Um, all our listeners in the chat are discussing how they found us. This is interesting and to me. Too, most yeah. of them found us um, on through, through the podcast itself and not through the YouTube videos. Oops, sorry, I'm going to do this one first. Piper says she just found uh, first found the podcast too. And then she listened on the podcast attic app. And then she said, listened, clearly now I'm on YouTube producing live chat. That's great. Maria says, I first found out on the podcast through seeing a tweet on Twitter. Mm -hmm. and, she, and Maria was one of our first, like, mm -hmm. followers, one of our first chatters. And so she's I OG. That. She is OG <laughs> for sure. Do, do you guys use the term OG in Great Britain? I, I'm curious if the UK, if that's uh, something. It's chill um, too. Why, oh, there it goes. I, it wasn't showing up for me at first. I heard about the podcast about a year ago from Robin and Sage in another writer's group. Oh, that's so nice of them to share us. Started right away live and also listened to back episodes on the podcast app. Fascinating. So, really fascinating. fascinating. Thanks for sharing all of that, you guys, because we don't know. So thank you. Um, okay. And so that should be enough to get everybody kind of started. And as, as Jen's talking, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I hope we didn't majorly overwhelm a million people, but check it out. It's not that big of a deal. Basically, all you're doing is organizing your thoughts, right? Maria says original something. Yeah. Original gangsta. <laughs> <laughs> it's an and it's gangsta, not gangster. Right, gangsta. Um, and we are only halfway through this business plan. So if your head is spinning, ah, we get it. We absolutely get it. So go to the small business administration website here in the United States. It's so they everything they have on there, it's free. They will give you kind of like what you need to do in your business plan. You can start there if you want to purchase this book. My suggestion is the ebook, you could have it today. If you don't do ebooks, which why not? But if you don't, you can grab uh, a paper copy of it. Um, honestly, I wouldn't probably spend the money on the, the workbook because you don't need it. I mean, I've used it, but you can Jenna, download everything. Um, so, Jen, for audio only, can you read exactly what the book is named and the, the author's title for audio only peeps? Thank you. I'm sorry. I often That's forget right. that. Yes, I can. The the uh, the author is Joanna Penn, who has she's great. She has her own podcast. Has for like ten years. She's very helpful awesome to authors. Podcast. 
the the Creative Pen podcast. Um, the book is called Your Author Business Plan. It's available everywhere she is wide. You could buy her book uh, anywhere you want to. They, they sell books. She also has it out in audio form, I believe. Um, you could buy straight from her website too. So Yeah. And tell her we sent you if you buy her stuff. So she might pay us a little attention because we feel <laughs> like for us, she's like our hero. Someday we'll be a big podcast like you, Joanna Penn. Yeah, tell her she needs to come on our podcast Ooh, so yeah, everybody in the world fun. will then listen to us. Yes, everybody who buys her book, tell her, go on the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. Go on the Christian Indie... No, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, ne maybe next week... These aren't the choice you're looking for. No, so next week, we're going to finish up our talk on business plans. Um, so you have time to, to kind of work on your business plan between now and then. Maybe shout out to Joanna. Maybe the next week we can get her on here to tell us what we did wrong. <laughs> yeah. And if y'all are listening and you're like business schmizness, this is all fun and games for me. Then just turn this all into goal setting yeah. and chill out about it. Because the ideal is, do you want to make uh, advancement or not this year? And if you do, you're going to have to make some goals and work toward them. That's really the takeaway, right? Okay. And um, we are going to move on to the feeding of the backs. And I'm so sad Rhonda is not here to read her little tale. Well, um, Barbara said that she's rebooting and hopes to be back momentarily. So oh, that, was, that was six minutes ago. And she's chat, she had chatted with us in our Facebook chat saying that, um, that she's having trouble connecting. So we'll say a quick little prayer for her to ourselves. And then hopefully she'll join us. But she's not having any trouble connecting with that sand and those seashells. I'll bet you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Her toes are connecting with the surf. No, totally kidding. Okay, Rhonda, we hope that you're fine. We're fine without you, though. We're sad. So, Jenna, I always pick on you to go first when I'm the host. So I'm not going to break tradition. What is the prompt today, and what did you write for us? So um, the, prompts the prompt today is, what if your main character must choose between realizing a lifelong dream and doing the right thing? Which this was perfect for the book that I'm working on, except that, like, it just... I couldn't even get to that point. Like I started writing the scene and I never got to that point, but hopefully I've read enough from this book that you, you'll you get it. And um, I told the ladies when we're done, I'm like, I kind of hate and love this scene at the same time. So mm, it, it needs a lot okay. of work and I know where I'm going with it. But anyway, I, like, the reason I hate it is I don't really want to share it yet because it's not good, but it, it could be good. So we'll see. Okay. <clears throat> Where's Marjorie? She isn't coming. Ryan could feel all eyes in the room turn to him, but he refused to let them know it. What do you mean she isn't coming? The question was from Angela, not Craig or Ryan's father, and it wasn't accusatory. Ryan looked up at her and regretted doing so the second he locked eyes with her. The, the look of sisterly concern that adorned her face pierced through the walls Ryan had erected against the world in a way that his father's criticism and words never could. Ryan, Angela asked, her brows knitting wordly over her soft eyes. What's happened? A rush of emotion swept through him like busted floodgate. And oh, so I'm saying there's some really bad mm -hmm. cliches. In this. It's fine. And all of the pent up frustration, anger, and pain that Ryan had walled away from the la for the last 20 years bubbled up into his throat. And Ryan feared he wouldn't be able to hold it back. But in a moment, he realized he didn't want to anymore. He was tired. He was tired of pretending that he was stronger than his father. He was tired of pretending that he wasn't hurt, that he wasn't still hurting over the death of his mother and his father's rejection. But most of all, he was tired of denying that in spite of his denial all these weeks, he was tired of denying that he was in love with Marjorie. And that last realization was the last crack in the dam. Ryan swiped the tears that coursed down his cheeks unchecked. What the? He heard his brother exclaim. Son, his father said almost tenderly, Ryan thought, though he knew the man unable to express such an emotion. She isn't coming, he heard himself mutter uselessly, unable to conjure the right words. I screwed up. I, I, no, I screwed up. In shock, Ryan's head snapped in the direction of the open office door. Marjorie. Three, two, one. Ooh. You guys have no idea what's going on. And I couldn't, so I don't, I kind of love that I'm going in a direction, but like, I hate that I had to share it because there's the not enough there. Is it the, the, like the not get divorced or that, you know what I mean? Like, is this yeah. the moment of like decision kind of a thing? Kind of remember a few weeks back, I wrote him deciding he was giving her up. Right. And so then this mm -hmm. happens afterwards. I don't know. I don't know if I'll even use it, but 
It was good to write it. it I get it. Yes, it. because you got into his head and you got mm -hmm. into what he's feeling. And that's why it feels like a win for you, right? I bet you feel like right. you know him a little better now. Good job. Right. Oh, I, thanks, totally, I got totally confused because I used the prompt that was in the Me too. outline. I did the different prompt too. I wasn't going to say anything because I thought I had the wrong prompt and I was just going to like wing it and pretend that my story made sense with the current prompt. No, <sighs> no, well, that's that, my fault because the prompt you did was it was supposed to be for next week. So I hope I had the wrong outline. Open and I have to like Chris Crasso. Right. So, cause next week, cause everybody else is I share. I'm really sorry. That's the first time I've ever done that. <laughs> That's okay. That's it okay. was it's really awesome. good. I really loved the story. Yes. It's really awesome. And you know what I knew too, because I saw Tina making all kinds of faces, but you launched right into your story and I could tell she didn't want to interrupt you. And I knew we were both thinking the same thing. I was almost like Tina is thinking what I am thinking. And it made me feel well, better instantly because I thought it was me. I thought I had typed the I wrong did too. So I looked at the outline. And I was like, yeah, that's what's, and so then I looked at next week's outline and that your prompt is on next week. And so you know next what, week you can do this week's. You know, what's hilarious is that um, before we started writing, I said, all right, everybody know the prompt. And everyone's like, yeah, I got it. I got it. And normally we're like, no, what is it? And if any one person had said, no, I don't know. We would have figured this out, but we did it. That's hilarious. <laughs> All right, I'm really sorry. And the rest of the world is writing what I wrote. Like, so like I don't know how we're gonna fix this for next week instead of let's we just do well, a whole next new week we'll have to um we'll just do a new whole new prompt. Rhonda or Jamie and I'll have to do the mm -hmm. prompt you did. Mm -hmm. oh, and everybody okay. else can do this week's yeah. prompt. Right. No harm, no foul. Oh, thanks, Gigi. Oh, I love it when a big strong yeah. guy cries. Oh, Team so John. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> Jesus says I'm excited seat. for next week's prompt. Now, well, this is the prompt I shared because I made the <laughs> social media, so it's this week's prompt. <laughs> I, really, so I screwed everything up. So it's everybody fine. Write it's this fine. Prompt. It'll be fine. It'll the be prompt, fine. I know everybody write this, and then next week you'll get to do the one that the ladies are doing right now. All right. Well, a little I'm backwards. Yeah. I can read mine next so that I'm not talking too much in the row to close us out here. Um, so my prompt that I wrote too is called "Planning is Everything." So <laughs> I don't know. And typically, like I did my typical whatever, that's the prompt. And here's what came out. <clears throat> the seventh child came just as the foreclosure notice dropped into the printer tray on the desk of the mortgage officer who would stamp it with the date and phrase executed before dropping it into her outbox and heading out for a salted caramel latte. The baby was a redhead like her sisters before her, and her only brother wept in confused delight as she was presumably washed and wrapped and handed to her mother. He had never seen her, of course, relegated as he was to the spot under the window, had only heard the one precious squeak earned for sure by the old widow lady who'd managed to rub out of her after a couple minutes of tension-filled silence. Hmm. I missed a word there. That silence had been the worst of it, worse than all mama's screaming and all the unkind words she'd muttered. Cer certainly certain her precious Matthias was nowhere at all within earshot. He had only just heard and processed, she's a little girl, before that big long silence had come. That silence had been the longest of his short life, the space in which he imagined the soul of his sister hovered suspended somewhere between this world and the one beyond. That's when the tears had started, streaming down his face with a speed that alarmed him. Now his hands worked double time, slapping them away as he headed out on his only assignment, running over to the barn to tell Pa it was all over. A sister, Pa, he shouted, even though it wasn't good to shout so much around the cows. He repeated the news a second time in a more reserved tone as Pa jumped from his stool and clapped him heartily on a shoulder. Another blessing, Pa said, and the smile went all the way to his eyes. I know we was hoping for another man around the place, Pa, Matthias said, feeling both confused and relieved that his father didn't seem the least bit upset. I know we was. Pa's arm slipped around Matthias's neck and they began the long mosey back over to the house. Matthias wanted to run to excitedly shout to the world about the wonder and miracle that was visiting their tiny cabin. But he understood that sometimes Pa's way, the slow way, was better. Pa's next words would confirm his instincts were right. 
We was hoping for a young man, but the Lord has given us the blessing he sees we need. Young women are delightful, as you know. Yes, Pa. Each of your sisters has been a blessing to us. Yes, Pa. And imagine what a mess the town would be in if they didn't have your sister heading up the schoolroom. Matthias did not have to respond. The rest of the journey was made in silence. Matthias tried hard to remember why it had once seemed so important to get a baby brother. He shook his head. I don't know what I've been worried about, Pa, he said. I know everything's going to be just fine. That was so good. It was. I'm, I'm struggling for words, Jamie, because the, most of it, I was confused. So I'm going to let Tina go first so I can wrap my mind around it, okay? <laughs> yeah, it took, it took me, it wasn't until you said Matthias that I realized that there was a child that you were talking about. And when you said your, the spot under the window, I was like, is it a cat? Is it a dog? <laughs> Awesome. So I was a little okay. confused yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if that you did that on purpose because that's the kind of thing I like to do. <laughs> I don't <laughs> like, know. I just totally purposely. wrote what came bopping out of my head. This kid, this kid, okay, I knew that he knew his sister was born, but like hadn't seen her or whatever. And I stuck him under the window listening to stuff going on. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. like, I don't even know where they live, but they're obviously stuck in Greenfield Village, and the mortgage officer is, like, in 2020, so beats me. So, right. here's Matthias and his story. I don't know. <laughs> but I really, really like the the slow walk from the barn to the cabin and the conversation with his dad. I just think that was gold. Yeah, I love Thanks. that. Yes, yeah. yes. So, the ideal Jason is... Says, I really liked it, Jane. Oh, okay. thank Go you. Ahead. Well, planning is everything. Seven children came to my head, right? And so then I'm like, so here they're getting foreclosed on and they just had their seventh kid, right? So the ideal is here's the foreclosure happening, but meanwhile, so this two is different what's locations okay. at the house, right? So like the mortgage is being foreclosed on and they don't know because at the same moment they are having this baby. So okay. the story is supposed to be a juxtaposition of them thinking everything is going to be great, but they don't know that in the mail is coming this foreclosure notice. Right. Right. Okay. So like. So that's not supposed to be. So I don't know. It's a sprint, right? And so it is what it is. And we don't criticize. We just give positive feedback. But my problem was, is that I was so confused in the beginning. Not your fault. Like, it's just because it's a sprint that like, to me, I felt like that the mortgage thing was happening like contemporary, like current time, then everything else felt like it was really in the past. But I was trying to figure out, I thought they were in the same room. Like, so there we're in a room with a, a mortgage person. And then there's a kid. Why is there a kid in the mortgage? Like I was trying to figure out, so is this person working from home during COVID and this is their kid coming in, but they're like, I was so like myself personally, I was so lost that I think I lost most of the story or if I could go back and read it. I would be able to enjoy more of your writing because the writing was good. I could, I could get so many good pieces out of it. And the, like the relationship for the father. Um, oh, Piper says, and I was also sad that dad was in the barn while the kids being more, I felt that too at the end. I was like, Oh, but then if this is historical, because you said, but your sister in the schoolhouse, well that like, unless they're Amish now, then that would be different. Like I, so I just didn't have enough information. I think it's my problem. So I'm sorry that I don't have really like good cheerleader stuff. Cause it was really good. I just was so lost for so long of it that I didn't have, I don't have anything, I don't know anything specific to tell you because I missed so much of it. I guess I didn't get okay. confused because I automatically assumed like that these people were like living in the hills of Virginia or somewhere like that where th they're still living like that today where they're just very poor and um, yeah. they would get their house foreclosed, you know, like right. that. I, I didn't have that. that. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I didn't have that information. And so like, if like, it just didn't occur to me. So if I'd had that information somehow before you start reading, I would have been totally like, you know, when you get a book, you see a cover or, you know, you have a little bit of information going into it, then I would have been probably totally fine. So that's my, it's my disconnect. Right. So J Gigi says, I love how Jamie reads her stories. Me too. Oh, thanks. Well, I will tell you that. And the mom ran away with the moon is available as an audio book through chirp and hoopla and all kinds of places. You just can't find it on Amazon yet 
because I have to upload them a new version of it. It's a very long story, but there's nothing wrong with any version you can find right now out there. Um, and I read it out loud myself. So if you like the way I read, go looking for it. And The Mom Ran Away with the Moon by J.R. Nichols. Thanks for that, Gigi. Exciting. Remember right. the, the writing group? meetings we used to have where we all used to make Jamie read our stuff. Yes. <laughs> the very first one. Cause I was so Petra. I was just like, it was like, then she's reading. I thought, Oh, it'd be so much better to have her read it. Like she's offered. And then I won't have to read. I was like, kind of like, Oh my gosh, my first time in a writing group. And it was worse listening to someone else read your work. And you're just like sitting there like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Cause they don't Aww. like when you're reading your stuff, you see the mistakes all right away and you correct them as you're reading. And someone else doesn't do that. Yeah. <laughs> that was the scary part. Yeah. Now I'm. Now we're totally cool with it. Like it's funny, but your first time is just like, oh, petrifying. Yeah. yeah. All right, Tina. Well, what did you write for your prompt? <laughs> I did the planning is everything. Also. All right. What do we got? Sorry. She sat before a blank screen, the flashing prompt mocking her. <laughs> In the middle of the night, the idea was so clear, so genius. <laughs> The best one she'd ever had. Now that she sat in front of her laptop, her mind was a blank. Where was the character so brilliant that everybody would love him instantly on page one? Where was the hook that would prevent anyone from being able to put the book down until the end? Where was the magical flow of words describing the mystical scene at the foot of a majestic waterfall? She squeezed her eyes closed and tried to conjure up the memory to picture it clearly in her mind so she could re reproduce it on the page what was the purpose of that waterfall anyway and how had the bare torso torsoed pirate ended up at the bottom of it with the distressed damsel with locks of flaming hair cradled in his arms she began to write starting with the bare torso before moving on to the flaming locks of hair cascading down to almost his knees she described the mist that floated around them and the smell of earth and forest and water Suddenly, magical fairy sprites appeared from out of the trees and began to poke at the pirate with little swords, the equivalent of being stung by, by a bee. The pirate threw the damsel to the ground in order to waft, ward off the little nuisances where she hit her head upon a rock, blood pooling around it. Oh. What? No, no, no. That's not what's supposed to happen. <laughs> but what is supposed to happen? She let on an exasperated sigh, hung her head in defeat and chastised herself for not waking up and writing the idea down while it was fresh from her dreams. She would have to go back to the drawing board. She pulled up her story genius Scrivener template. After all, planning is everything. Yay! Yay, that's awesome. So good on so many levels. First of all, like the story within the story. I mm -hmm. love that inception, right? The story within the story. Um, and then, but the story within the story was like very detailed and like, you know, like you're so into that. Then you realize, wait, that's not even the story. The story right. is the person writing it. Like, like so I'm suddenly invested in this pirate. Right. <laughs> Piper says, LOL. I feel this, Tina. Yes. Yes. Where are the magical words that are eluding me? Where are you? Curse you idea that fled from me in the middle of the night. Yes, yeah. that was autobiographical. Ah, has this happened to you recently or just all, it all has happened time. to you all the, all the time? time. I never get up and write stuff down and it seems so perfect. Like when you're laying in bed in the middle of the night. I've gotten up and written stuff down and then got up in the morning and been like, what? And you wake up in the, wake in the morning and it's like uh, leftover pizza. Yeah, no joke. One that? time I wrote to myself birdcage. No joke. That was the word I, I left to myself. Some cryptic, ooh, this is going to be awesome. Yeah. Gigi <laughs> says, Tina, that is great. And Piper says she feels it. Yeah. Really good, Bambina. Way to go. Now, we're running a little long with the episode today, so I guess it's okay that we didn't get to hear from Rhonda, but we're big sad, Rhonda. And if you all want to take a crack at either prompt, we don't care, such a timer <laughs> for 15 minutes, listen, put this prompt on your website and then share it with us on social media because if you have free short stories to read on your website it will increase website traffic there's no reason why you wouldn't want to share your sprints with your reading audience you can even put a little disclaimer look i didn't edit this you guys this is how the sausage is made this is how writers write so spread that manure around if you create a piece um, put it everywhere that you are, okay? And then share with us so we know that you did your work this week and we can say good job. Okay, now we have to talk about what's next for all of us in our writing careers. Bambina, what's next for you this week? 
I'm going to get my business plan done and I'm going to proceed to follow it. Awesome. Awesome. Are you looking for some accountability this week or what's the, what's the deal? Uh, no, I think that I need to be better at self accountability. And so I'm not going to ask for accountability. Ah, interesting. What do we have for you coming up this week, Jen? Are you going to get rid of your dead plant or we're not sure about that? I'm kind of thinking that I'm going to just leave it there, try to yeah. resurrect it and we can like kind of watch the progress as the yeah. week go on mm -hmm. or I'll move it. Um, you should mess with us and just like plant a big flower in there after a few weeks. Like, look what happened. Replace it with a silk more? plant. Hey, there's green leaves there. That plant is alive as far it's, as I'm concerned. No, it is still alive. I can resurrect it. It's just I have to remember to do that. But anywho, um, so my coming week, I'm going to finish my business plan um, in hopefully like final format, not just rough draft. And then like Tina, I'm going to follow it. I'm also going to like specifically, I'm still doing office hours um, at, from eight to 10. I'm, I'm adding some time in the evenings. I'm going to edit in the evenings. I cannot edit in the morning because then I, I lose all my creativity. So writing in the mornings, still doing, if, if those of you that don't know, we're, I'm doing live writing sprints. Jamie's been with, with me all week. She may pop in, Tina may pop in. We don't know, but for sure I will be there Mondays and Wednesdays from eight to 10 doing writing sprints. So please join me. And that's and my guess coming what? Week. Guess what? what? My what's next is we're bringing back newsletter chat. Yeah. Newsletter chat. Like Rhonda was like, can we at least keep the newsletter chat jingle? if we 86 <laughs> newsletter chat. But what we decided was we already have a little tiny baby audience um, on weekday mornings. So Jen and I said weekday mornings seems to be where there are people who wanna hear our flapping gums. So let's do weekday mornings. So we said Tuesday at nine might be a good time to try newsletter chat. And we're gonna try a shortened format. We're only gonna bug you for about half an hour, but we want you to come and be inspired and get ideas for your own newsletter. Because sometimes you're just like, what could I do to make things a little more interesting or fun? Do you have ideas? or just chat about just whatever. It's an opportunity for you to come in and hear from us and it's not Friday. Okay, let's face it. Piper says she unearthed the calendar pages from her work in progress and needs to tweak her timeline by adding a few scenes, then back to the editor for a last look and hopefully getting the cover ordered. Ooh, that's yeah. really real. That's exciting. All right. It's very exciting. If anybody else wants to share their what's next, I don't know, we have a, enough time to read all of them, but maybe the chat can kind of keep going. You guys can encourage each other. Um, so yeah, my what's next is newsletter chat returns this week. And um, my business plan, I really don't want to do it, but I have to do at least the financial portion. Because for me, writing down my whole business plan feels too much like writing a novel. Like I've already been there in my head. So the actual work of writing it down is so boring. You know what I'm saying? It's like, Ugh, maybe I could dictate it or something. But anyway, I do need to think about the financial stuff because the way it works for me is like I have a website that's being hosted over here, but then the domain is paid for over. Like I just have little bits of money being spent, $3.99 here. And I need to really get a handle on what I'm spending to sustain all of this uh, nonsensical stuff that I'm doing to myself. So that's where aren't I'm you a, Aren't you a homeschool mom? Couldn't you make this an assignment, a writing you assignment think. for one of your teenagers to learn you how to write think. a business plan? You would think you would think that I could. But the principal has some different ideas about oh. participation in the family business. The principal feels like mandated compulsory participation is going to sour them. So the principal has overruled me. All right, I think so you have such a crush on the principal. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you yeah, know. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> Shell says, goal, write 200 words a day. Get consistent. Kill it, Shell. Crush that goal. Shell is a goal crusher. I know she's going to do it. Shell says, I'm going to do whatever. She shows up next Friday and says, guess what, y'all? I done did it. Go, Shell. So um, with that, I think it's maybe time to sign off. What do you all think? Sounds good to me. Yep. All right. Well. That concludes this episode of the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. So until next time, may your pen be prolific, may your deadlines be met, and may all of your words honor Christ. Bye now. Bye. Bye.